Good afternoon, Standard 8 students. Now, yesterday I taught you when Mr. Victor Hedley found that the hydraulic press is in the wrong place and here the purpose of installing a machine is to dig out the soil. But they have installed a machine that flattened things. So when he questioned them about it, they said, they said, we have our ways. That means we know exactly what we are doing. Now I have taken you fully into my confidence. And I shall expect you there at High Fort at 11.50. So now you wanted to know about me and the kind of work that I do. Since now you are aware of everything. So I think now you can trust us and I'm sure you will oblige us by meeting me at 11.50. I reached the High Fort station after 11. As I pressed out through the gate, I found the colonel waiting in the shadow. Without a word, he grasped my arm and hurried me into a carriage. He drew up the windows on either side and away we went as fast as the horse could go. As the carriage stopped on a gravel drive, gravel drive in a road which is full of pebbles or stones, we stepped out of the carriage and went straight into the dark hall of the house. Just then, a woman appeared with a lamp. Colonel Stark whispered something in her ear and pushed her back into the room. Perhaps you will wait in this room for a few minutes, said he. Then he vanished into the darkness. A feeling of uneasiness began to steal over me. Suddenly the door of my room opened. It was the woman. Now the way Colonel Stark grasped him by the arm and put him into the carriage means as if they were in a great hurry. So now all this kind of activity that took place made Victor Headley feel very uncomfortable. He found something strange. So he felt very uneasy. He was not comfortable about it. Like the way the woman came, the way he whispered, and then she went back. And again he said, we will be back in a few minutes. And he disappeared into the darkness. He felt something suspicious. Something very strange is going to happen. And just then, the door opened and it was the woman whom Colonel Stark had whispered something into her ears. Get away from here before it is too late. So she warned him, she said, move away from here before it is too late. She whispered in broken English. Just then, the sound of several footsteps was heard upon the stairs and she vanished as suddenly as she had come. Now quickly she had come to give him the warning. But as soon as she heard the sound of the footstep, she quickly went away. The newcomer was introduced to me as Mr. Ferguson, the colonel's secretary and manager. We went upstairs together. It was a labyrinth of a house and we stopped at last before a low door. Now a labyrinth is actually a kind of a 
big building like hospitals offices you know a huge mansion and they have very irregular passages or paths or corridors so you wouldn't know actually which corridor will lead you to which part so that is the kind of a building where he had got then the colonel ushered me in ushered me means to show somebody where they should go like this way we'll go over there we are now say he within the hydraulic press the ceiling of the small chamber is the end of the descending piston that way the ceiling is the end of the piston that means from there it is going to come down onto the floor that means the machine start from the ceiling upwards the ceiling of the small chamber is the end of the descending piston cut the piston will come down from there descending means to come down ascending means to come up and it comes down with the force of many tons one ton is on 100 kg so maybe many tons could you imagine the weight so according to him it's going to come with a great force what he meant be it can crush anything into pieces or flatten anything with this force that is how this press works and it comes down with the force of many tons upon this metal floor the floor is made out of metal but there is some stiffness and it has lost a little of its force perhaps you could show us how to set it right so now what is the problem is that that piston which is supposed to come down with a great force has become stiff means it is not coming in the same regular force so we want you to fix it we want you to repair it something has gone wrong which is holding back the force to set it right means to mend it to repair it okay i took the lamp from him and examined the machine i knew at once there was a slight leakage through one of the side cylinders i pointed it out to my companions and how they should set it right so he took the lamp and he was examining the machine and then he found out the fault so he explained to them how it should be done it was obvious that the engine could not be designed for so in advocate a purpose he said he found it very i thought he found it very strange <coughs> they were insisting that this machine should be done should come back with the same force but what he understood was that this machine is is not sufficient enough to help them at the kind of business that they were doing now their business was to dig out the soil because that soil the mud is used for cosmetic purposes so it does not need any very hard metal or something in this particular business it is not required now we are teachers okay our tools are what pen paper rubber eraser pencil sharpener chalk blackboard now these are the things that are associated with us okay now i cannot come to the school with a big saw to cut my pencil it sounds very odd okay so like that that machine did not the engineer realized that this machine 
is not matching with the kind of business they are doing. That machine has got to flatten thing, makes it into a sheet. But then what he did was, he found that this machine is, is insufficient, it is not enough. You need another machine. You may flatten things out here and then send it for another purpose. <clears throat> so the walls were of wood, but the flow consisted of a large iron trough, means a flat iron trough with metallic deposits all over it. That means something had been crushed, had been flattened and the remaining all these small, small chips or tiny particles, okay, fragments were lying here in there, metallic fragments were lying. So while he bent down to feel what it was, immediately Colonel Stark saw him and he asked him what he was doing. So he said, actually, I'm just trying to check on the quality of this fuller's earth. Now that did not please the colonel. He looked annoyed. He looked angry. And what he did, we will see later on. I mean, you're not supposed to observe everything over here. So what he did was, he angrily, he left the door room and he banged the door and he locked it. After that he could hear the sound of the machine working. Somebody had started the machine and then he looked up and he found that, that descending piston it starts from the ceiling. He found that the ceiling was coming down. And in no time, he would be crushed into a pulp. Means he will be smashed with this heavy weight. So immediately he turned around to see, he managed to see a door. And he quickly jumped and escaped through that door. And there he was rescued by that lady who had told him to move away from here before it is too late. Now she led him into the bedroom and into the window. She said, the building is quite high from here, but you can still jump. So why don't you jump from here and run away? Because these people are still going to get you. They will be after you. And while she was talking and helping him to jump, he was already, he clambered on the windowsill and he was holding it to jump when Colonel Stark was found with a cleaver. A cleaver is like, you can say a chopper or a huge kind of a knife, heavy knife, rough knife that usually butchers use. And with that, he had already struck. When he struck the windowsill, Mr. Victor had already fallen down and when he fell down, he had to run for his life and then he realized that his thumb was chopped off. Seeing to that, he fainted and the first thing he decided was that he would go first and get his wound treated and then he would inform the police about this particular case. I'll end it till here. Okay. And today I shall send the word meaning and the question and answers. So during the holidays you can write it down and learn. Thank you.